So now we have this uh, nice surface mesh that we've created with our lofting. We could have lofted it directly into polygon mesh if we wanted to, but we didn't. So now we need to, or maybe we want to convert this into uh, polygons or subdivision surface. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we simply have it selected and go to NURBS to mesh. So that brings up this window here. Let's have this guy here. There we go. And uh, we'll just move this down a little bit or across. There we go. And there. So we have just something that we can work with. Okay. Now, basically, there is a continuity between the two. Um, so that if I just sort of grab some points and move these down, they do have the relational modeling uh, on. But you'll see that this is now very polygonal. It's sort of angular. One of the things we can do is rather than create the mesh from the actual NURB surface, we can make it from the control hole. If you remember, the NURB surfaces are actually created from a control hole on the outside. So that if we do that, let's click this on, it is very angular, but then when we subdivide it, it'll approximate the actual surface of the uh, NURBS object a lot more exactly. And then, of course, we can increase the detail uh, on the object however much we want or need. Um, remember that, again, it's often better to have less detail here and just increase the amount of subdivision surfaces, creating a smoother uh, sort of surface if you need to. But it's very important to remember about the uh, control hole here, because often that will give a more accurate approximation of the NURB surface. Now, any NURB surface can be done like this. So if I just get a, uh, a grid here, whoops, way down here, there we go. And uh, let's just create another one and uh, sort of put this across like that. And we'll just stitch these together using our assemble. There we go. All right. And let's just bring that up. And notice, oh, I didn't quite put didn't quite put them enough tolerance on those. I'll just do it again. Let's just move that again and just bring them a little closer and put the tolerance up a little bit. So I'll surface match and assemble. And let's just put this to, I don't know, 0 0.5. Okay, and now we have them stitched together. That's what I was trying to do. So we'll just uh, bring these and we'll now maybe take a subsurface and uh, just move them up. So we now have two separate sort of NURBS surfaces uh, created into one NURBS mesh. And even so, we can still go NURBS to mesh and create our NURBS object out of there. Again, maybe from control hole, so that we can uh, then create this out of a subdivision surface. And you'll see that there's actually a, a pretty good match of the actual shape um, across them. The more we increase, the more it'll actually match over. And so then if I move this sideways, we now have the subdivision surface and the NURBS. And even if I go into here and, for example, change the relational modeling will create keep the relation across the surface continuity manager onto the NURB surface. So you'll always have that relation that's quite accurate and again very very powerful way of working uh, with whatever tools have any best. But do remember that now we can actually create uh, the revolutions, the extrudes, the lofting directly into poly mesh as well as surface mesh.